let us do this question in case if uh, this is one of the question which is asked to you uh, when our consumer preferences said to be rational and if preferences are not transitive can you always find out the best bundle so here the question is asking you about the rationality axiom so when are the preferences rational so we will start with this supposedly if uh, there are let's say two bundles uh, let's say let's start with this capital x belongs to rn plus capital x is basically the consumption set and this is belonging to rn plus so this means that this is belonging to the positive orth end of the real plane you can consume zero of x you can consume one of x or infinity of x of course you cannot consume uh, negative of x have you consumed negative of apple no so zero of apple that's fine you don't want to consume that you consume infinity of apples you can do that theoretically speaking but uh, you cannot consume negative of this so consumption set it belongs to the real uh, this positive orth end of the real plane so let's say there are two bundles x and y and this is belonging to capital x so technically speaking what you are trying to say is this that x is uh, one nth dimension vector right and y is the another n dimension vector but i'll just assume it to be x1 x2 y1 y2 so i mean for just for the simplicity sake you can just have x as x1 x2 and y as y1 y2 right okay so r is basically there are three kinds of relations one is your r r is the weak preference relation r is the weak preference relation or it would mean at least as good as so there if there are two bundles if you say that x is weakly preferred to y that would mean x is at least as good as y right x is at least as good as y so that's a basic thing everything is built up on r so and then you have p which is the strict preference relation right so x is strictly preferred to y so how do you define this strict preference relation so what do you say is this that you pick up two bundles from the consumption set x and you say that uh, x is preferred to y this would mean x is at least as good as y but y is not at least as good as x that should be true when you are saying that apples are strictly preferred to oranges what you are trying to say is this that apples are at least as good as oranges but oranges are not at least as good as apples right apples are at least as good as oranges so for example okay don't quote me on this but just giving you an idea so apples and oranges So let's say apple gives you utility 14 oranges give you utility 12 so 14 is greater than equal to 12 but 12 is not greater than equal to 14 so you can say that apples are at least as good as oranges but oranges are not at least as good as apples right so what do you mean by this is this that when you say that the two uh, bundles one is strictly preferred to the another for example x is strictly preferred to the another and you're saying that x is at least as good as y <clears throat> but y is not at least as good as x so this this is not sign 
right? This is for not. Okay. So what you're saying is this, um, and how do you call this one more relation, which is I, that is indifference. Indifference with it. So given two, given two bundles, uh, X and Y, you are indifferent between the two. X is indifferent to Y. So how do you define this technically? This I relation, you define it in this, in this way. You pick up two bundles from the consumption set X and you say that X is indifferent to Y, that would mean X R Y and Y R X. That would mean what? X is at least as good as Y and Y is at least as good as X at the same time. So if you say that apples are at least as good as oranges, you say, sorry, apples are indifferent to oranges, you're saying apples are at least as good as oranges and at the same time, oranges are also at least as good as apples. That's what you're trying to say, right? That's what you're trying to say, that apples are at least as good as oranges and at the same time, oranges are also at least as good as apples. So if, if, if apples are also giving you 3D14, oranges are also giving you 3D14, so that 14 is equal to 14. Now apples 14 is greater than equal to oranges 14 and at the same time oranges 14 is, is equal to the apples 14. That's, that's the way it is. So this is the way you technically write this definition, right? Well, then you have the rationality axioms. Rationality axioms. So, when do you say that uh, the preferences are rational or the consumer preferences are rational? So, R is rational. R is rational if it, if it satisfies the following properties. One, that it is reflexive hmm? reflexive would mean what so if there is one this pen right and this pen should be at least as good as itself it has to be right that's the feasibility there right um so you pick up any bundle that bundle has to be at least as good as itself. Uh, so you pick up one bundle X from the entire consumption set, capital X. And uh, the idea should be that this small X should be at least as good as itself. That should be true, right? So what do you have for all X belonging to capital X? XRX is true, right? So any bundle is at least as good as itself and it is just an identical bundle. So um, Varian says, uh, he says that parents of small children might uh, feel uh, that this property is not satisfied sometimes. For example, if you give a, if you give a ball to a child and uh, just a similar ball is given to it, given to, to that child, he might like it or he might not like it. Or the same ball might not be at least as good as itself in terms of child's preferences in one instant and then in the end of an instant. So, but in reality, mm, this is generally satisfied, reflexivity. So, for most of the preferences. So parents of small children, you can say, might uh, observe, occasionally observe some behavior of their children which violates this property. So you might want to write parents of small children
may occasionally observe the behavior that violates this assumption, right? Um, but as far as adult behavior is concerned, it seems more or less plausible every time. The second property is completeness, right? Mm -hmm. So what does completeness say? It says this, that is, uh, if you're given with two bundles, then you should be always able to tell which one you prefer. So you cannot say, no, I don't know what my preferences are over these two bundles. So because if you are not able to, if you're not able to tell, then how can any other person can model this behavior? So this is required. Um, you should be able to say that, uh, whether you prefer X or you prefer Y or you prefer both. You can't say, I don't know. You can probably say you don't like whatever, but then also we can also ask you that which one you don't like more. From there we can, infer. but you can't say just, I don't know. No, I don't know is not allowed. Indecisiveness is not allowed here. So if you give you two bundles X and Y, you should always be able to tell that which one you prefer. Whether you prefer X or you prefer Y or you prefer both. You should be able to say that. So having said that, you pick up two bundles from the capital X, that is consumption uh, set. And this is true. X, either X should be at least as good as Y or Y should be at least as good as X or both. This should be, allowed. this should be there, right? So either X should be at least as good as X uh, L as good as Y or Y should be at least as good as X or both. Right. So now this is basically trying to tell you that if you're given with two bundles, you should be able to compare it. It should not happen that you're not able to compare that, that that should not be the case. And uh, well, it, there might be some kind of a life and death situation of your choices. Uh, I don't remember the name of the film uh, in which uh, uh, the actress was asked, uh, you have to choose uh, one child out of your two children uh, because the other child will be dying and the other person, other, other one is going to live. Now, this life and death situation it is very, very difficult for, uh, for the mother to actually choose between two children. Right. So, but most of the times, uh, these kind of life and death situations, they are completely outside the domain of the economic analysis. So we are not concerned much with them. Right. So it is simply saying that consumer is able to make a choice between the two bundles. So it is simply saying this, that uh, <clears throat> between two two bundles right so an indecisiveness is not allowed or indecision indecision is not allowed so you can't say no no i don't know what my preferences are no this is not allowed right okay then you have but when transitivity. Hmm? So what does transitivity says? It says this, that uh, if you're given with three bundles, for example, apple, oranges, and bananas, and you can say that apples are at least as good as oranges, 
oranges are at least as good as bananas, then apples are at least as good as bananas, right? This is what transitivity is defined over a tuple. So you pick up three bundles from the consumption set and you tell that uh, uh, if X R Y and Y R Z, then this would imply X R Z. So it is defined over a tuple. It's true for all such bundles. X R Y and Y R Z implies X R Z, right? So this is what the tuple says. Uh, sorry, sorry. This is what transitivity says. If apples are at least as good as oranges, oranges are at least as good as bananas, then apples are at least as good as bananas, right? So I've just given you the idea for the R transitivity. There is also something which is called P transitivity, PI transitivity, IP transitivity, and I transitivity. You don't have to get into that. So that's enough. Now, the point is that there might be the cases when transitivity property is not satisfied as such. And uh, it might turn into a peculiar behavior. You can say that in case of someone is not satisfying the transitivity property, then it is uh, leading to a very peculiar behavior. It's not that in real life, the preferences cannot be intransitive. They can be, and there are situations when there are intransitive. And uh, you can't say that the preferences are wrong, no. But the only thing is that our problem is that we cannot use such preferences in order to find out the best bundle. So, for example, if you have cyclical preferences, for example, over x, y, z, my preferences are defined to be this. Hmm? Over x, y, z, my preferences are defined to be this, x, p, y, y, p, z, x, z, p, x, right? Well, if I take up x, p, y and y, p, z, and if I look at transitivity, it should have given me x, p, z. But what is true? z, p, x. Hmm? If I have taken y, p, z, and zpx, then according to transitivity, it should have given me ypx. But what is true? Oh, sorry, xpy. Hmm? If I have taken zpx and xpy, it should have given me zpy. But what is true? ypz. How will you find out the best bundle? So that's the problem with the intransitive preferences. So you may not be able to find out the best bundle and we are so much accustomed of finding out what is the optimal, right? Given this budget, given these preferences, what is going to be the optimal? And this is what you're going to do in this entire course. So if preferences are transitive, then there could be the situation that you may not have any best bundle, right? You may not have any best bundle. So. If preferences are not transitive, then they could well be the preferences for which there is no best bundle for which there is no best bundle huh? also not only that you can also say something else. You can say, if these preferences could be represented by the real value utility function, cyclical preferences, they cannot be represented by the real value utility function. For example, XPY, um, 
xpy would have fetched you what ux greater than uy right because if you're saying that x is going giving you strictly higher uh, you strictly prefer x to y so x must be giving you strictly higher utility than y ypz ypz would have given you uy greater than uz now these are real value numbers right so if you're saying ux is greater than uy and uy is greater than uz then you should be able to say that ux greater than uz but what is true uz greater than ux because zpx is true so if these preferences they cannot be they may not be a utility function which is representing these preferences right let's do one example so there are three individuals a b and c And the relation which you have is uh, let's say strictly taller than. So the question is that is this relation reflexive? Is this relation reflexive? Well, it is not reflexive. It is not reflexive. Why? Because how can you say that A is strictly taller than himself? That doesn't mean any sense. Uh, so A is not reflexive. It is uh, false to say That A is strictly taller than himself. So this is not reflexive. Is this complete? This is not complete also. Can you always say that some who is strictly taller? Two people might be of same height. Then this relation is strictly taller than it will say. I mean, you cannot, you cannot compare them. Uh, because your relation is strictly taller. Than. So... It is not complete. Might be the same height, right? Is this relation transitive? Yes, it is. Because if you're able to say that A is strictly taller than B and B is strictly taller than C, then you should be able to say that yes, A is strictly taller than C. So it is transitive. It is transitive for sure. Because if you can say that A is strictly taller than B and B is strictly taller than C, then you should be able to say that yes, A is strictly taller than C. So this relation is transitive, right? So what is it that you have done in this uh, thing? And you might use this in order to answer the question which has been given to you. So where the consumer preferences said to be rational, when they are reflect, when they satisfy reflexivity, completeness, and transitivity. Uh, also, you have also defined what are the strict preference relation and the indifference relation. R is the basic relation which you have. And if preferences are not transitive, can you always find out the best bundle? No, you may not find out the best bundle always. You've also defined what are cyclical preferences and the problem with the cyclical preferences that you may not be able to, to represent them with the utility function, right? Okay, thank you, Buddha.